Hi, this is Dr. Barron with High Point Spine and Joint Center. I wanted to make a quick video about your diagnosis of cervical segmental joint dysfunction and what it is, um, some of your treatment options that we have in the office to help you, as well as some of the things that you can do on your own to help at home. So, um, neck pain is one of those things that affects most people at some point in their life. Um, it's one of the leading causes of people missing work or missing school, second only to low back pain. So if one of the most common causes of this neck pain is cervical segmental joint dysfunction. And it's usually caused by having a joint in your neck that is restricted or slightly misaligned in an abnormal movement pattern uh, that affects your neck and creates pain in it. Um, the neck should move freely and independently throughout the entire cervical spine, but sometimes it gets restricted and a joint gets jammed together or locked or fixated is another, another term for that. And then it just doesn't share the motion through the spine like it should. I'll sometimes use the illustration of like a spring. A spring should be able to kind of move in all different directions and um, in different vectors. But if I went and welded a piece of that spring together, it would still move, but it just wouldn't move efficiently anymore. It wouldn't move uh, properly between each segment. And that's really what happens in the spine. It'll still function, but it doesn't move correctly anymore. And that usually leads to this cycle of pain, inflammation, spasm, which leads to more pain, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more restriction. And you get this big cycle that happens. And so that's part of cervical segmental joint dysfunction. Um, there's lots of different causes. Um, I, the most uh, common thing that we see is these repetitive movements, repetitive postures that lead to this self-perpetuating cycle. A lot of our goal is to interrupt that cycle. Um, it's usually characterized by a local tenderness, discomfort in the neck. You, like I say, you'll have some limited range of motion, usually in certain, uh, certain movements that will be limited. It can cause pain that goes into your uh, upper back, your shoulder. Sometimes it'll come up into the head, giving you a headache. Um, some people can even get some jaw discomfort, discomfort from it as well. Um, Long-standing joint fixations here um, can lead to earlier arthritis, um, earlier degenerative disc disease because you're not getting proper movement through the spine and through the neck. It can lead to chronic restrictions which lead to more arthritic change or degenerative change in your neck. Um, the nice thing about uh, this cervical segmental joint dysfunction is that chiropractic care has been shown to um, greatly reduce the incidence of neck pain and is one of the safest and most effective treatments for it. So we see a lot of it every single day. We utilize in our office combination of different therapies, different modalities, different treatments. Most common is um, adjusting or uh, manipulation of the cervical spine where we fully evaluate how each of the segments in the spine works and then try to restore normal movement in each of those segments so that it's not restricted or locked anymore. And that can help interrupt this cycle of restriction and discomfort and spasm. Um, so we'll often utilize some sort of joint manipulation. Um, we'll use different myofascial techniques to try and reduce muscle spasm, tightness, and restriction in the muscle. Um, Things like dry needling can be helpful. Where we stick a monofilament needle into the muscle. We run a little current through it to try and help that muscle to fire, reset, and then relax for you. Um, we often will use different exercise modalities, trying to teach you some different um, stretches, some muscles to strengthen up weakened muscles that can help prevent this problem in the future. Um, we also utilize traction at points where we stick you on a decompression table that helps to pull and relax 
the, the disc of the spine and that can help interrupt some of the pain as well as some of the muscle spasm in the really small deep joints of the neck. Um, so what can you do at home to help yourself? Probably the best thing that you can do is try and find some of those triggers that are creating this problem to occur. So you, like I mentioned before, it's usually a combination of uh, uh, habitual patterns of movement or habitual postures that lead to this. So looking at your workstation, for instance, at work, making sure that that is set up correctly so that you're in a nice neutral posture so that you're not turned facing one way or the other, making sure that your screen is where it should be so that uh, your neck is in a neutral position for the majority of the day. Um, looking at things like how you are on your cell phone, uh, making sure that you're maintaining a nice neutral posture again. Uh, the way you sleep, making sure that you have a good pillow that supports your neck and your shoulders, again, in that nice neutral uh, posture can be helpful. Um, so things like that, and then obviously making sure that you're consistent with the home exercises that we give you to do on your own. Those are important stretches and exercises to help prevent and to treat this problem that you're having with your neck. So thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful for you. Please feel free to call or text our office anytime with any questions. We can be reached easily that way. Um, and we'll see you at your next appointment. Thanks.